What up though, it's Q here again with another video for you. And today, I'm here with one of the players from the home team. So being from Detroit, I finally got my hands on an American vehicle. And I'm here with the 2024 Ram 1500 Rebel. So the Rebel is gonna be the off-road package. So you've seen previously, I've done a Raptor TRX and Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. This is Stellantis's Rams spinoff of the off-road full-size vehicle. So let's take a walk around and see what we got. So this being the 2024 model, the 2025 model refresh is on the way. And this is going to be your last call, not a last call edition, don't mistake it for that, to get a V8 in one of these. And the V8 that's in here is the 5.7 liter Hemi. So you're familiar with that, it's in the Chargers and Challengers, which are also going to go to a turbocharged inline six so the power and torque will be up but we will miss that v8 rumble so we love every, every every iteration of the v8 that dodge or ram has put in these vehicles so definitely going to miss the hemis but right here what we got is the last chance to get one so this being 2024 2025 is going to be a completely different truck before we get into this review of this almost fully loaded vehicle don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell browser channel let's jump into it so the color on here is called hydro blue pearl the very vibrant blue looks really good and the base price of this truck is fifty nine thousand three hundred dollars but you know with the vehicles i get they're gonna be a little bit more in this case a whole lot more so this truck has so many extra options on here i normally speak out each price but i'm not going to do that in this video i'm just going to put it on the screen just because it's so many features so many options is going to add 20 grand in options just about in here so this is going to come with almost everything that's going to cost a pretty penny except the panoramic sunroof if you want your ram rebel to be specked out like the one i got here it's going to set you back a cool eighty three thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars so that's going to be a steep price tag but let's see what we got up under the hood because you can't get this with the pentastar v6 but we got the hemi in here because why would we do it any other way besides that pop the hood see what we got a whole lot of space greeted by this big ram every every emblem on here is just huge man but even up under here so we got a ton of space up under here with this 5.7 liter hemi and it's going to be cranking out 395 horsepower 410 pound feet of torque and this one is the e-torque on here so that's going to be a mild hybrid man when i say mild i mean slightly mild like just a little bit so this e-torque is going to give you an added 100 pound feet of torque of boost when needed off at launch especially but this is not going to be the most efficient so the epa is going to rate this at 18 in the city 22 on the highway and guess how many that i've been averaging in my week with this ram rebel 12.5 so that's not that great you know I, i've driven a substantial amount of highway it was cold i know cold takes a toll on the hybrid but man i, I would think the regular hemi would be able to do a little bit more maybe it's got to be the tires the aerodynamics i was sitting high but yeah that's what we're working with here and this is made it to an eight speed automatic and we do have all wheel drive in this configuration the red wheel only comes with four by four if you're doing some off-road things you're gonna have to have four by four on here so the recommended fuel is actually going to be mid-grade 89 octane that's something you don't see a whole lot so you can get three configurations for the gas tank it comes standard with a 23 gallon gas tank the 26 gallon gas tank is also a standard feature. You just gotta click the box on it. Or you can get a 33 gallon optional tank, which you gotta pay a little bit extra for. So you're gonna be able to tell the Rebel by this blacked out grill. It's like kind of a plastic grill up in here, matte black, and these vents on the hood as well. That's gonna let you know that you're dealing with a Rebel. This air suspension gonna have you riding in comfort. If you wanna do some off-road things, go over the snow, any type of terrain, you can just click a button, do that. Or if you just wanna cruise, it it'll lower down for you or if you want to just enter the vehicle from the remote you can just make it lower from the key fob and it'll get the get the suspension as low as it can be but this is a very smooth riding quiet truck this is a luxury vehicle to me like it's quiet on the inside but we'll get to that in the driving portion of it it's also very practical extremely practical this is a full-size truck we do have our ram box on the side here you can put whatever tools you need on here organize that a lot of space got an outlet on here because you know people driving these trucks they got jobs 
Or they park at the mall, as some people say. I see these on the road, but not doing off-road things. I don't be doing off-road things. So we got a few little things going on back here. Got a step down below for the people that's vertically challenged. We do also have this tailgate, which you can open right here. We're gonna have our cargo management, which you can also, you can just manage our cargo back here. If you got some things going on in the back of the tailgate, we can manage that with this little feature accessory right here. This is a five foot seven inch bed. We do have a trifold tunnel cover here. I find it nifty that we do have LED lighting back in the tailgate. It's gonna come in handy. Too bad we can't say the same about the inside because we got incandescent bulbs on the interior. Also, we've got a light on the back where the third brake light goes. We do have this traditional tailgate, but we also have it as a multi-function tailgate option. So instead of pulling up on it, we're gonna push down and we can slide it to the side. It's gonna save on room so we can open it up from side to side. So that's a slick function. You don't see that too often. And looking down at the license plate, we're gonna have our trailer hitch accessories down there so you can hook up a trailer. And then we do have our trailer hitch. This is a truck, means the business. One thing I like about the Ram, a lot of the trucks, they have the exhaust pipe that curves out to the side, or they did at one point in time. The Ram has always had the dual exhaust. So it is going to mess it up for some kind of towing applications, but I think it looks cool. Coming into the back seat, these are some wide doors. You're going to need some space. So this is a full-size truck. We do get the additional storage of being able to fold the seats up so we can have added practicality. You can just use this whole floor. Same with the other 60% of the seats back there. So that is very nifty. Easy to do. My kids had no problem fitting back here at all whatsoever. You could probably fit four adults back here if you needed to, but it's only three seats. Three seats, three full-size adults back here. We don't have HVAC controls. We do got these two huge vents and change the direction. We do have two USB-A, two USB-Cs, and then we're going to have a 115-volt receptacle back here. Plenty practical. This is sitting behind myself. I literally got over a foot of knee room back here. So no complaints whatsoever. These incandescent bulbs, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> back to front. I don't know, they're cheaping out on certain things. We do have some speakers in the ceiling. We got speakers everywhere. It's gonna be a 19 speaker Harman Kardon system. It is great. I'll let y'all hear that later on. Cup holders in the door. Also got them in the center console for the back seat. And we're gonna have some in the middle seat back here. Front door. Gonna notice we got these black door handles. Love that about vehicles. Cup holders everywhere down here. Just ample storage everywhere. Like even this <laughs> storage down here as well. More speakers. We got Rebel in Boston in the seats. These seats are comfortable. Stepping on them, we got two more cup holders down here. Center armrest is adequately wide for both people to put their arm on there. We do have the Ram symbol in Boston in here. We do have more storage in the center console area. We got our wireless phone charger here, but we'll get to that in just a minute. And you can actually slide this. This is where your cup holders are going to be. We have storage right up under here. And if you close it down and pull up from here, we have even more storage down up in here. And then if you need a quick math lesson, Ram got you. They got your protractors, ruler, all that just built into the center console. And aside from the glove box down here, we also have another compartment up here led lighting up in there underneath the wireless charger we do have another 120 volt outlet there we do have two more usb a and usb c charging outlets right here and an aux cable i ain't seen one of those in so long this wireless charger though riding for like 30 minutes my phone went up like three or four percent with gps on ram really packages extremely well remember when i just did go check out the acura tlx video where they have the the gear selector right here Ram has it right here, so it's out the way, so they can add this extra storage. This is what I'm talking about with the ergonomics. This is well thought out. And then we got our drive modes, where we got two-wheel drive, four-wheel auto, high and low. And then we also have an auto start stop. We can turn that off. I like to drive with that off. We can lock our axles. And then if we want to change our gear foot on brake, turn the dial. We do have the option to select two memory settings. So that's going to adjust the seat. And we do have adjustable foot pedals down here with the button right there so we can actually move the brake and the gas pedals. What in the world? When this iteration of the Ram came out, everybody was talking about this huge display. And it is a lovely looking display. I'm not feeling it 100%. It is a beautiful display though, let me not get that twisted. And we do have these buttons, physical buttons hitting up in here, the HVAC controls and the piano black. 
but my only gripe about it we do see some screen freezing in here I've seen the screen freeze about four to five times within this week Got this incoming call on the cluster which won't cancel and then if I come over to the phone screen in CarPlay it's one thing about this screen all of your controls minus the the HVAC controls up there are going to be within the screen. Even the heated seats and heated steering wheel, which these seats get on fire, but it's going to be in the comfort menu here. If you want to turn that off, that steering wheel gets blazing hot too. And let me turn on the seats back, the heated seats. You got to go within the menu. So my daughter wanted to, she was sitting in the passenger seat. She wanted to uh, adjust her heated seats. You had to go to the menu. And that can be pretty distracting if you got GPS going where you got to go to the menu just to fumble around with these change the passenger temperature as well so we do have a lot of trailering options on here which unfortunately we don't have a trailer but if you do you can set up trailer profiles and it makes hauling the trailer and even hitching up to a trailer extremely simple with all these cameras this does have 360 degree cameras a chimsel camera which is going to help you guide your tow hook gooseneck whatever onto the trailer to the truck and then this is going to adjust our ride height here I'm about to sit high because why would I not be one of the truck bros? And we can change our towing and hauling, park aids, traction control off with this button here. Open the rear window, got a toggle switch here. Power slide. We do have tons of options up in the instrument panel cluster. Highly customizable as well. Also have a heads up display, which was an option on here. Tow pitch, distance travel, audio miles per hour very easy to read lane keeping miles per gallon which is abysmal that range I'm getting about I'm going to get about 240 miles on this tank before it's on like empty I do like that the heads-up display is also customizable you can put navigation on there the speed limit signs your current speed it's, it's quite a few things you can put up on there this is a big heads-up display a couple things I would have liked to see implemented once you lock the truck I would like to see it to where the mirrors fold that's something I had to manually do as well as these seats as hot as these seats get I want those to dial back like automatic climate control for the seats and the heated steering wheel once it hits that temperature I need that to cut off because it, it gets roasty another nifty feature we got here digital mirror display or you can get a, a property spec mirror but I like to keep it on the display the digital one Take the 2024 Ram Rebel for a spin. But I do have it in the highest suspension setting because it looks marvelous. And I like to sit up high because I never get a chance to. I sit in sports cars all the time. Why not sit up high? So it's so high that I can't really get in here comfortably. Well, I can. I'm youthful and I'm a little bit flexible. But I do got to grab onto this, help myself in. Got those oh shoot handles in the back seat too to make it easy for you, especially older people. Push button start. Ram Rebel. Buckle up for safety. So I have it set up to when I get in the vehicle, my heated seats are automatically going to come on and it's going to be on the hell setting. So let me tone that back and turn the heated steering wheel off because it is extremely hot. So visibility on here is great. We do have this 360 degree camera which you can change so many different modes. I do wish the screen, since this is a large display, but the actual camera setting on here is just half of this display. So I wish that were larger. I do like it that we can have our surround camera. We can make it to where it's only the front camera. We can look on the left side only, the right side only. So this is useful, very useful. And we even got more cameras. That's going to come into play where we got our auxiliary settings. You can customize these trucks to do a whole lot more. But let's start driving and let me see what the turning radius is going to be. But before that, you can just drive over anything. I'm just driving over mountains of snow right now. Boom. That was it. <laughs> can drive over any terrain. We got a whole lot of ground clearance. It's going to do nothing because the front bumpers are designed to do off-road things. The turning radius. Let's lock the steering wheel and see how it does. Um... It's wide, <laughs> very wide. 
already know we're not going to pass our spot over there. But let's go see. Very wide turning radius. One thing I do like about it is how quiet it is in here. This thing is, the sound deadening in here is fantastic. I can see why a lot of people choose the Ram, especially over the, uh, the Tundra and F-150. It looks amazing. The designer for these, they knocked it out the park on the Ram. And I do like the Tundra looks as well, but we got the V8 on here. RIP to the V8, soon to be. These are the bumpy roads. We got these off-road tires. It's going to take all this up. So one thing about the Ram that I noticed compared to the, the TRD Toyota Tundra, like the Tundra was really bouncy when it came to uh, the shock absorption. The Ram is very smooth in its application, its implications. Oh, yeah, this has got to be the widest turning radius of any vehicle that I have tested. It is no chance. Shout out to Vince McMahon. But let's get on to the Craterfield Road, and then we can lower the suspension. Actually, we're going to watch the suspension lower itself. You can tell by these four illuminated LEDs that we're at our highest off-road setting. And once we reach a certain speed, it's going to come on down. It soaked those up really well. That's normally, like, I, I got to grip my teeth riding over that. But on here, it's really smooth. We can see we lowering down. And we can see by the little telltale in the, in the cluster that is it's an arrow pointing down with the truck height. So why would I choose this 2024 Ram over the competition? V8 Roar. That's it. Gotta love that. And infotainment in here, it does have its quirks, its lockups with the, the wireless Apple CarPlay, but other than that, it's a fantastic truck. So we're gonna do a little bit of handling for now, just to see how that does. That's not what it's meant for, but since mostly everybody's gonna be driving these on the road, we're gonna see what that's gonna be like. Do y'all hear that, man? Who wouldn't want a V8? Oh. <laughs> These Hemi sound amazing. They don't even let me start to talk about that TRX. Man, that supercharger, those things roar. These sound really good with a just a little H-pipe mid-muffler delete sound. It really wakes up the exhaust. It kind of muffled from the factory. Open that up. You got a monster. The 5.7 isn't a slouch either. It, it never feels slow. That e-torque, it really helps out. I wish it was more efficient than what it is, but for the power implications, it's going to be amazing. And it's so smooth as well. And it's so quiet in here too, because these are like all terrain tires. You see all those grooves I had in those tires. It's so quiet in here. This is like a luxury cruising truck. I can see why people definitely flock to these Rams. And the Ram has been so good with this iteration right here that it outsold the Chevy Silverado a year or two ago. So that's impressive. <laughs> the Chevy Silver, this the F-150 is always on top for like the last Forty some, forty-seven years, forty-eight years maybe, and then the Silverado has always been in second. But this Ram, that put it over the top as my fuel light comes on because man, this drinks gas. Those twenty-three gallons were all gone very fast, which is shocking to me. I only got two hundred miles on this tank, which is kind of terrible. All right, let's check out the audio in here.
quality on here is great. Not excellent because it's missing out on some of the fidelity that I would like. The crispness of the highs. The bass is there. The loudness is there and it doesn't get distorted. The higher that you go, I like to be able to hear everything and it doesn't get distorted. That's why I give it a great sounding system. Let's see what it's like from a standstill to a takeoff. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that. Just the roar of the V8, man. Gee. Let's merge onto the highway. Because normally these tires will be loud, but I'm gonna let y'all see what y'all hear with your own ears. Gets up to speed. Brisk. What I do like about this, these mirrors, you see how we have that cut over in the mirror to where we can see extra blind spot? That is very nifty. Same as on the passenger side. These are some huge mirrors. This is a huge truck. It's hard to park as well because the turning radius, y'all saw that. It wasn't the best, but these mirrors help out. The camera definitely helps out. And the skip tracks, which I'm always looking for, that's behind the steering wheel, skip tracks behind here, and the volume up and down is over here. Cruise control works as it should. We can demonstrate that right now. Set it. It's going to have adaptive cruise control so you can get up on somebody's bumper in the drop top limousine. And it should slow down for us once we get a little too close. Shout out to Next. We also have our lane keep assist. It's going to keep us from going over the lines. Not meant to be a substitution for you driving. You got to keep your hands on the wheel. This Ram Rebel has such a commanding presence. Like even against older lifted trucks, I still sit very high, especially with the off-road mode activated. Like I can see, I feel like I'm sitting as high as some semi trucks out here, which is crazy. <laughs> and this is all stock. You have no reason to get some aftermarket shocks. Of course, you can go extreme and get your wide tires on here, but this out the box, this is adequate. Like this is definitely going to go up against the Raptor which uh, got rid of the V8, unless you get the Raptor R, but that's gonna go against the, the TRX. But this is like a step down, so definitely I choose this over the Raptor, because it does a whole lot more. It's a better design inside and out, in my opinion, That of course that is. Shout out to Race Car 21. I know he loves his Ford. Once again, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Stellantis, Ram in particular, for loaning me this Ram Rebel for the week, 1500. So who is this truck gonna be for? This is gonna be for your more adventurous person. Now I know some people can get lower trims like the, the Laramie or the, man, even the work truck. But this right out the box, if you don't want to modify a truck, this right out the box is gonna be the one. Like if you don't want to buy a lift kit, you want to still have your warranty intact, be able to do a whole lot of things. But this has a ton of options on here. Like you can get like, if you don't go crazy with the options, which would, it would be a bare bones truck, but you can live without a lot of these options. I like the way this is spec, but whoo, that 80K, that's a big ticket. So this is definitely gonna be, oh, we've got another Ram coming up on the side of us. Someone who wants a well-designed truck on the inside and out, this is the ticket right here. Especially, you better run. I don't wanna sound like a, a salesman, run don't walk to the dealership to snatch these up before those 25s come on the market so it's going to lose the v8 and that's the heart and soul the dodge to me or ram i keep i'm used to saying dodge ram before they spun ram off into his own company but yeah this is a stellar truck this might be my favorite truck out of all of them I'm not talking about the high horsepower ones but when we got the the tundra trd and the regular raptor this is the one I like the most. Minus this infotainment system. The software update, they can fix that. But from what I know with Dodge, they normally had the best infotainment. I worked in infotainment for over a decade. They had the best one on the market as far as like it's quick and getting where you need to go. But this one, I, I just seen a couple lags that I didn't like. But normally this infotainment system was the benchmark in the industry. I hope you all enjoyed this Ram Rebel as much as I did. So if you got any questions, drop a comment, let me know.
with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, follow the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.